Hey everybody, Aaron here from Country Countryside Corner, also Countryside Acres. If you're not aware of who we are, I am a father of uh, nine, and my wife and I and eight of our children moved here to Russia three months ago, and are beginning our lives here again. So if you want more information on on our family, you can check out Countryside Acres, where we have our family farm vlogs. Uh, right now, it's a bit more of a travel vlog, and you can also look on some of the the interviews and uh, videos that we've done on this channel as well. You can learn more about our channel. Today, we are doing an interview with an expat from America. His name is Ronald. He's been living here in uh, Russia for, I believe, about a year, and now we're going to get some of his insights on why he came here and what he feels uh, Russia has to offer, why why he's here specifically, why he didn't go to another country. So hope you guys enjoy. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the videos to help us grow our channel. Good day, everyone, and welcome to the Countryside Corner. Here we're all about faith, family, and freedom. Brought to you from no other than Mother Russia. <clears throat> Let uh, maybe tell everybody a little bit about who you are and where, where you're from and what you're doing here. Uh, my name's Ronald Godier. Um, I'm a uh, uh, retired airline captain from uh, Texas, and uh, I uh, I moved to Russia for the final time uh, back at the end of uh, 2021. But I've been visiting Russia uh, off and on since uh, my first visit to the Donetsk uh, People's Republic back in 2018. About this time of year, it was the spring of 2018. I came here um, primarily to. Uh, see what was going on uh, with the uh, Ukraine conflict. Uh, as a lot of you may know, it started back in 2014, not in uh, 2022. And uh, so I was involved, uh, involved a lot as an information warrior, uh, providing humanitarian aid. And I uh, made uh, multiple trips uh, to Russia and one trip to, to uh, Donetsk uh, back in uh, 2018. Uh, but uh, what eventually happened, it wasn't really planned, um, was I decided that, uh, you know, I, Russia was a lot cooler than I expected it to be. And I decided to go ahead and, uh, and live here. And in uh, a little over two years ago, I, I just decided to make it permanent. I, I quit, uh, I quit my job and, uh, and came here permanently. So cooler I, as in colder? Huh? Uh, it so depends mean, on where you are. <laughs> yeah, it depends on where you are. You know, I uh, my first visit uh, uh, to Russia, the first city I went to was St. Petersburg, and that was in the springtime. It was in May, May of 2018, and uh, it was unseasonably warm and uh, blue skies, beautiful. I was there on Victory Day. It was like 80 degrees Fahrenheit, blue skies, and I was thinking, man, this is like the most awesome city in the world, and. Uh, uh, then I tried to live there. <laughs> uh, yeah, beginning in 2021, at the end of 2021, I tried living there, and I realized real quickly that it's not always like that. <laughs> and so uh, the last couple of winters uh, in a row, I've been uh, either in uh, down in Sochi or down in uh, Sukhum in Abkhazia. And finally, I decided to settle here in Krasnodar, and that was a major factor. The major factor is that it's just, it just a lot – fewer cold days here, a lot less snow, and it's a lot So the climate a lot more similar to what you're used to? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it does, it does get pretty hot here in the summer. It doesn't get quite as hot as Texas. Uh, it gets up around 40 C, you know, pretty regularly, yep. high thirties. And, uh, so Tanner, that's main, something we've discussed, uh, discussed with somebody else too, people that move, it's a lot easier transition when you go to somewhere, uh, where the climate's similar, right? Like I know people who've yeah. gone from a cold climate down to a hot climate and it, it's too much of an adjustment. So it's interesting that you say that. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can handle the heat, you know, cause you can, you can just, the way I like to dress in the summer shorts and, and a t-shirt, you know, as long as you're not doing like hard physical labor out in it, it's, it's no big deal, you know, but uh, uh, what I can't handle is, uh, you know, it's not so much the temperature. It's just the, the fact that it's like cloudy all the time. You know, it's uh, the snow and ice everywhere, which looks real pretty when it first falls, but especially in the middle of the city, it starts piling up and you get yeah, big, yeah, yeah. Yeah. ugly snow piles everywhere. Yeah. So here, you know, here down here in the south, 
you know, if I want to, if I want to go to the snow, I've got the Caucasian mountains are real close, two hours, two and a half hour drive, and I'm in the mountains. And it's kind of like some skiing was, or something. Yeah, if I want to go skiing or if I want to just play in the snow or see the snow, uh, but it's not like with me all the time. Like we had, we had snow here in Krasnodar for like two weeks, you know. So anyway, that's okay. that's one Fair of the enough. reasons. I oh, you, you, that was. Sorry, that was 2021, right? Or 2020? Uh, negative. That was uh, 2018. That was in May of 2018. Oh, that was longer. Yeah, that, that was okay. my that was my first that was my first visit to Russia. And you've basically been here ever since. Uh, no, I've been coming here off and on because I was still working. I was still working as a pilot, and it wasn't until the end of 21 that I finally came here permanently. I finally decided full to time. Stay. Okay. Yeah, just so it's give actually up on three years. Huh? Basically, yeah, you know, two and a half years. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm pushing three years now. Yeah, yeah. So not maybe fresh in your memory, but how well were you received as an American coming here? Was that an issue? Did people think negatively, especially with what's going on in Ukraine? Or mm -mm. no, I no think uh, yeah, I haven't had any issues at all. In fact, they're usually super friendly to you if they find out find out you're an American. Yeah, because they're the, the main thing. The, the ninety nine percent of us, as they ask you, like, "What you doing here?" <laughs> that's that's like, you know, why, yeah. that's that's like, like, what you came to Russia? Why? You know, that's that's usually what they what they ask, you know. So, but uh, they because don't, uh, because they think America's better, or why do you think they ask? Yeah, that? I, I think you know a lot of them, a lot of them. Well, I, okay, now I have to I have to qualify this because I'm talking about a, a lot of the people that I met here. Um, uh, are English speakers, right? And All right. the reason, yeah, and and they belong to English clubs. And this is actually, I, I go to these English clubs to meet people, right? Although I I am learning Russian, and I'm not I'm not fluent in Russian. I'm I got like survival level Russian skills, but right. uh, uh, for socializing, I go to these English clubs, and a lot of the people that you meet there, um, the reason why they're learning English is because they want to relocate to the West or they want to relocate to America. And uh, and that's why they're learning English. So they, it's a little bit of a biased crowd. They, they, mm, they're yeah, yeah, yeah. a younger crowd too, generally, you know. But uh, I have made some, and they're not all that way. And I've had made, I've made some good connections through these clubs. And that's something you could do okay. like pretty much any Russian city you go to. Uh, especially as a native speaker, they're going to really uh, uh, want you in their club, you know. So, um, in fact, I was invited. Uh, it was just purely by accident. When I was out looking for uh, an apartment here in Krasnodar, uh, one of the people that was selling an apartment said, hey, uh, you should come to our club. You know, we need native speakers there. So, I was going to say from Texas, it's not really a native English speaker, but you don't even have a drawl or nothing. So, <laughs> No, because I, I, I didn't live my whole life in Texas. Yeah. Oh, okay. About half. Yeah. About it can, half, half it can be pretty about. thick down there. So, yeah, it depends on where yeah. you are. But uh, yeah. generally, the the urban the urban Texans, you know, like like if you go to Houston, places like that, they generally don't have like a, a country accent. But it okay. just it just kind of depends. Just depends. Yeah. Mind their own. All right. So, what about wife, kids, family? Uh, for the viewers, uh, I, I can't I'm remember. Divorced. I'm divorced. I've got a uh, uh, my ex-wife lives in the Austin area, and I've got a, a daughter in college right now up in Dallas. Okay, what did they think about the move? Uh, well, I, I think everybody that everybody that uh, that knows me in America just thinks I'm nuts. <laughs> <Pretty Okay. much. laughs> Fair uh, enough. I don't, think, <laughs> I don't think anybody thinks it was like a really awesome idea, you know. But, uh, but you've been here for three years, and none of their worst fears, probably, uh, if they had any anyway, came true. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah, that's got to speak I, to something. Yeah, they, the thing is, is, is they don't understand just just how serious I am with my convictions, you know. So okay, uh, and I kind of, you know, the way I look at it is, you know, you only live once, and and if you don't follow your convictions and your dreams, then you're you're really not fulfilling your life. So. Right. I consider myself yep, to be I, I somewhat of a somewhat of a revolutionary, <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I want to be part of of what I believe is uh, you know the right side of history, and that's that's kind of made the main reason I'm here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I can agree with that too. 
Yeah, I just found for ourselves and talking to other people too, but uh, for ourselves, a lot of family that was opposed now that we've been here for three months and they read some of the comments and they hear things from us. They're like, oh, OK, you know, they're, they're, their perception of what Russia is has kind of changed a little bit, at least. And the longer we're here, the more I think it'll change. Right. So. Yeah, well, I, I think in your case, um, uh, now I'm just this is just I'm just guessing uh, about your motivations, but I think that. Primarily, you were uh, you were upset with like societal decay in the United States, and you didn't want to raise your kids in that kind of environment. And you thought maybe Russia was a healthier place to raise your kids. That's just my guess. Okay, and and to that, I think you're right. <laughs> if that's true, you know, because I think I think Russia is definitely definitely the society here isn't it hasn't this woke crap hasn't taken over here. And they don't, they don't right. even know what political correctness is, you know, and it's not, it's just not as sick as the American society or even the Canadian, the Western society has become. And the other thing is, I think, um, you know, although economic opportunities here aren't that great, I mean, the, the average Russian salary is about, you know, $700 a month. You know, it's a lot cheaper to live here, but still, they don't have a ton of expendable income. So, but, but I think, the direction, the future, is is looking really good. I think I think uh, a lot of the a lot, a lot of the basic uh, elements are there that will eventually mm -hmm. lead to a promising future. Whereas I think the West, especially America, has just been in a, a long slide for years, and it, there's it's it's going to keep getting worse. I don't think it's going to get yep. better there. So, um, it's both economically and societally. So I, I see the two countries. They're like. You know, Russia maybe economically is down here right now, but it's moving up. In fact, we had we had I think in the last quarter we had like seven percent growth. I heard. You know, whereas yeah, most of Western huge. Europe is in recession, and the United States is probably in recession too. They're just not admitting it. And uh, so we've got a growing economy. We don't have a, a ton. I'm not going to watch my language. We don't have a ton of. Uh, <laughs> sorry. We have to uh, have the know, BPO. I okay. got but I got to watch my language in front of you your crowd so but no we don't have a, a a ton of inflation here either you know i've been here uh i've been here uh you know since the beginning of the smo and yeah the ruble has fluctuated a lot but it doesn't it doesn't really like on a daily basis it doesn't affect me that much the things i buy on a daily basis now i've heard you know i've heard from people that that say buy cars cars got hit pretty hard because and especially for russians for russians love to buy foreign cars you know, they, they mm. in general, they don't like Russian cars. They, they think, like, ah, oh, it's low class to drive a Russian car. Russian cars are crap, you know. And, uh, of course, foreign cars got really expensive. You know, it got, like, doubled in price. And and that also drew up, drove up the price of Russian cars. But uh, right. aside from that, aside from that, like, like fuel and, uh, you know, utilities and basic food and stuff like that, just stuff you need on a day-to-day -day basis, it hasn't. The prices haven't increased hardly at all, you know. So, I think I think overall yep. the economy is pretty healthy, and it hasn't been affected in a negative way um, by the uh, by the sanctions to a large degree. Yeah, I always much. tell people not to not to look like this, right? So, <laughs> if you just look like this, and you look at Russia today, and you look at Canada today, then yeah, you might be able to argue that that Canada might still be better. But you got to look at where Canada was ten years ago. And where they are today and look at where russia was 10 years ago and where they are today and then i think yeah. it's pretty clear where we're headed right and same thing yeah. for the states or for europe right so yeah 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 i mean i can say without any reservation i'm, I'm going to be 64 in july and i can say without any reservation that the united states has gotten worse every day that i've been alive right yep. <laughs> I mean, every every year has gotten worse and worse and worse and it seems like in the last 20 it just it's just exponentially so yeah that's going faster and faster and faster is what we've been. unbelievably you know yeah. if if you would had shown like america today to someone living 20 years ago they would be in total shock <laughs> yeah. how much yeah 100 changed for the worse you know it's it's unreal yeah. you know it's amazing how much something can change in that short of a time. So I'm hoping that Russia continues for the better and that they recognize uh, what caused some of the West's downfalls, that maybe they'll make more steps. They, are, they have made a lot of steps, but they make more steps to, to not go down that same road.
Now, especially right. I'm thinking like when it comes to Hollywood movies and, and the music industry, which I think have been absolutely detrimental to American society. Right. Right. And right. unfortunately, so it's, it's, it's Western, uh, Western media is still pretty popular here. <laughs> yeah. You know, right. I, I don't yep. know. I haven't been to a cinema, but I know that all the Hollywood films play here, you know. They just right, and there's a lot of subliminal stuff that's going through there. So, but they did make some um, propaganda censorship stuff as far as movies. Some things are not allowed to be played, at least, and shown. Right. So that helps. Right. Well, right. they, you know, they, they've, and I think it was, I don't remember the exact year. I think it was in 22. They came up with the anti LGBT LGBTQ mm -hmm. uh, propaganda law. You know, so it's actually illegal uh, to spread that type of propaganda here. And uh, right. also, I think you're very good. also consider that these LGBTQ groups or anyone spreading this propaganda is an extremist organization, and you can actually be arrested. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, say what you will about. I mean, uh, there's definitely not the same level of freedom of speech in this country as say what you're used to in the United States. I mean, they can actually arrest you for saying the wrong things here. But, you know, um, I had my life really seriously disrupted for my speech in America. They, they didn't, uh, they didn't uh, uh, arrest me, but they, my career at a, at a certain airline was ended because of it. I got, I got kicked off a bunch of uh, platforms uh, like Airbnb and PayPal and uh, a number mm -hmm. of others uh, because, of my, because of my speech. Yeah. You know, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, hurt anybody. I didn't do anything technically illegal. I was just talking. Just what know. came out of your mouth. Yeah, yeah, and 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 uh, you know, I was at the time I was a big time Trump supporter, and uh, they were going after Trump supporters. In fact, they discovered where I worked. Uh, it was Antifa. Antifa came after me. And they discovered okay. where I worked by uh, by looking at the uh, my campaign contributions, because you know in the United States, if you make a campaign contribution, you're required to give all this personal information, including where you work, and it's public oh, wow. record. Yeah. So they and when they, as soon as they found out where I worked, uh, Antifa started harassing my company on their company's company's Twitter feed. Yeah. Saying you know have you have where people can hunt down. Yeah, you, yeah, you know you have this right wing extremist, uh, you know, working for you, and uh, yeah. so that basically from there on, it just about like, two, months later, two months later, I was I was fired from that from that job. I found another job uh, for another another airline that was uh, a freight airline that was the, the guys uh, were more sympathetic to me. They, they knew about my history and they were sympathetic to me. And uh, they were pretty cool. I, there was actually two different airlines that that wanted to hire me, um, but uh, yeah, I worked for them for about eight months. But I finally just said, "Screw it," because it was a it was a horrible job. I mean, the pay was terrible and the working conditions were terrible. And I was flying right. an old, an ancient DC nine, and so, whereas before I'd been flying like a state of the art Airbus A three twenty, and it was like just a I see you know on a bit of a change. <laughs> I'm done with this. I just that, that's it. And, and there were some other issues too that I was having. It was like you know I'm I'm, I'm done. I'm, uh, I'm out of here. So yeah, here I am. You bring up an interesting point though, as far as freedom of speech, because uh, I see that in the comments a lot. You realize you move to a country that has no freedom of speech, blah blah blah. But people don't recognize how much freedom of speech has eroded in the West. Like I know, especially in Canada, there's a lot of things we can no longer say. Right? They're policing the internet now. Uh, they're right. censoring a lot of the news in in, in Canada. Right. When we were traveling right. in the states, there was articles that we could read while traveling that our friends in Canada could not see because the Canadian government has censored things. And people in right. Canada even don't realize that. Right. And then right. they go after your social media posts. Now, uh, the Bible is it, it's not completely law yet, but they're pushing it through to make uh, portions of it, at least hate speech. You know, these things mm -hmm. are changing and people don't recognize it. It's easy to say, hey, Russia's got this or who's got that. But people don't look at home and see what's actually going on in their own backyard. Mm -hmm. Well, you bring up hate speech. You know, hate when, when these hate speech, this whole concept of hate speech came out. It was initially meant to be like, OK, talking making derogatory comments about protected classes, 
Okay, mm -hmm. don't say black or gays or anything else. But but it's evolved into now. It's 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 more or less saying anything they don't like. Right. Ba yeah, basically yep. anything that they don't like. It doesn't matter whether it's directed at a specific protected class or not. If they if they don't like what you're saying, they'll just call it hate speech. And and yep. trust me, they they uh, are working really hard to make hate speech laws to make it illegal to say basically anything they don't like. So they, they've already, they've all, already they, do, they do have active censorship. There's no question about they have active censorship in the West. I mean, on YouTube, on YouTube, they have active censorship. I know I've been a victim of it. Yep. I've had I've had YouTube channels before, and I've gotten strikes and warnings and everything else for stuff I said on my. Yep. I don't have. Well, I've got one now, but there's nothing on. It. I have no content. But I I had a pretty good sized channel before that I shut down because I just got sick of it, you know. But uh, um, uh, yeah, they they've got active censorship, and they're working on making these. Uh, uh, hate speech laws, and they already have hate speech laws in, in certain European countries, like I think England has it, and I think Germany has it. So you, they can actually arrest you for saying something that they don't like. You know, if yeah. you make yeah, and people don't people don't recognize that. And pretty well, all the social media platforms and the mainstream media is they're all owned by a a certain collection of people that are all on one side of the political spectrum. So that makes mm -hmm. it pretty tough. So then people say, well, the majority is saying this, so it must be true. Well, yeah, but the majority is owned by by one side, right? So you're only going to get that side of the story as well, right? Right, right. Very right. much. And that's, that's the other thing is, is if they keep repeating the same lie over and over again, pretty soon it yep. becomes the truth. I think that's what Goebbels, Goebbels said, right? Absolutely, uh, yeah. And if that's all the people here, if that's all the people here, which if you live in the United States and you're getting – 90% of your in, in, information from CNN, that is all you're hearing is complete, total propaganda. There's, yeah. they, they flat out lie. They flat out make up stories. I mean, I'll say this about Russian media. Okay, Russian media, yeah, of course it's biased, but they don't lie. If, if you see it, if, you, if they make a statement on, on TASS or, or – or, um, RT or any of other, any of the, the other state non-state media sources it's it's the truth now it's got they might emit things and they might spin it a little bit but they don't they don't outright lie like western media does out western media outright lies they've been lying yep. about this war in ukraine since it started and and a whole lot of people in the west believe the lie and it's leading us very quickly towards nuclear armageddon yeah, well, hopefully not. But yeah. Yeah, well, that's where it's going. That's where it's going. If, if I think if, uh, we could do a whole segment on on that topic as well. Maybe we should do it sometime. <laughs> one one on just politics and where we see this going, because I could talk about that for hours as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, just uh, just to be clear, I mean, that's that's my ninety nine percent of my motivation for being here. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Well, I think we will. We should have that conversation. I, I, we we have privately a little bit, but I think we should do it on here sometime. Okay, yeah, back yeah. to the topics on on hand, though. What uh, what were some things that shocked you coming here? Coming from America, coming here, was there some things that really took you by surprise? Or yeah, yeah. Well, I, I kind of had like the Tucker Carlson reaction because you know I remember you know I was kind of a big fan. I still like Tucker, uh, but I, I I watched the show a lot on Fox and for years yep. and. Uh, uh, he often he, he often called uh, Russia a third world country that couldn't even make a working escalator, and you know, <laughs> I, I thought Tucker, you need to come you need to come to Russia because you don't don't know what the hell you're talking about. It, but he, he was trying to downplay the Russian threat. You know, you say, oh, don't worry about Russia. They they don't they can't even make a, a working uh, escalator. He lived, that's a that's a Tucker quote. Yeah, um, really, but. Oh yeah, yeah. Go go back and it's it's a few years back, but go back. Yeah, and so I think he he had like me and a lot of other people had kind of preconceived notions that were based on like stories we heard uh, of how Russia was in the '90s, you know, where all the chaos and disarray and economic turmoil and crime and everything that was happening in the '90s, and yeah. uh, and don't realize how much of a transformation there's been in the country. Under under Vladimir Putin, you know how much he turned the country around, and uh, and it's just getting better all the time. And and you go to a, yeah, you know you go, you go to a big city like Moscow, 
uh, or St. Petersburg, especially in the center. And yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's mind blowing really, you know, it was way, way nicer and than I expected. I was still, I was worried about my personal safety. And in fact, I didn't start getting comfortable here until I'd been like a year or so, you know, and, Okay. but now I, I mean, I've never, I've never been hassled by anybody and I've been, I drove my car you know, all the way from the Barents Sea, Teddy, Teddy Berka, north of Murmansk all the way down to Durbet, uh, which is on the uh, border of Azerbaijan. I drove through all those car, Ingushetia, uh, Ossetia, uh, Chechnya, uh, up through uh, um, Astrakhan. Uh, I've been all over pretty much everything. I've seen pretty much everything um, west of the Urals, Urals. And I've, I've stayed in a lot of these small provincial cities. I've even stayed in some small villages. I've never had any hassles from anybody. Never, never felt worried about my safety in any way. Never had nothing stolen, you know. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that that was something. I bet I was you, uh, I bet you can't say the same about the states. Oh God, no, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, let's face it. I mean, any big city in the United States, it's like uh, when you're in the cities in the urban. Uh, 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 city centers, man, you got to keep your head on a swivel because you never know who's going to come up behind you and, yeah. and, you know, knock you out and take your money, you know? So it's, it's, it just, you know, you, there, you do run into, uh, uh, I've, I've run into like a couple very rarely, uh, you know, beggars and stuff like that, you know, but, uh, it, it's rare. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed that multiple times driving around here. I haven't seen. Well, there was one time at a at a train station. I thought maybe maybe those guys were homeless. I don't know. I wasn't really quite sure. But I, you don't see any tent cities. You don't see any homeless people. You don't see any drug addicts. I don't see any any crime happening. Uh, even garbage like the streets are clean. The, the ditches are clean. Yeah, after winter, sure, there's some stuff in the ditch, but there are people going around cleaning it all up now, right? So it's uh, and this is the only city I've seen. It's not maybe a reflection of all of Russia, but I'm, I'm really, really yeah. impressed here compared to what I've seen back home. And we traveled the states for three months. Like there's, uh, it's really nice here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's, I mean, there's some, there's some kind of, there's some less nice places I've been to. Uh, oh, imagine uh, Astrakhan, for example, is it's I, I call it a city that that time forgot. You know, nothing is. There's some cities that that after the Soviet Union ended, they just stopped being maintained. So like, if you can imagine 30 okay. years of like no maintenance, and that's that's kind of like the way I see like most of that city. Sorry, people from Africa, they're gonna get really upset at me now. But even they admit it, 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 it sucks there, you know? But, the, but even- Yeah, we see a lot of that in Georgia as well. Yeah, but even in Astrakhan, uh, which is one of the crappiest cities I've seen in Russia, uh, the center is nice. They keep the center really okay. nice, and they've they've got a they've got a uh, they've got a, a Kremlin there, and it's and they've got a nice embankment along the uh, the Volga River, and uh, they have actually went swimming in the Volga River there in the summer, and it was it was nice. Yeah, it's, it's so there's, but the city overall is is yeah, it's kind of it's a little bit run down, you know. So it just it just depends on where you are, you know. Obviously, cities like Saint Petersburg, Moscow. That's where all the money is, so it's going to be much more developed and much nicer. Right. But it's kind yeah. of an interesting phenomenon I've noticed of, of pretty much all all Russian cities is that generally, in the the closer to the center you get, the nicer it is, and the further out you get, it tends to get more and more less. It nice. Makes sense, so, really. Yeah. Yeah, we got the same. I think well, back in America, Canada as well. In America, right. it's like it's like the the suburbs tend to be like nicer, right? In general. And and the and the and uh, the city. Well, if you go far enough out, yeah. But if you go into yeah. actual center of the city, usually somewhere around the city hall is where it looks the nicest, I find. And then you get yeah. a, you know, it gets kind of ugly. And then, yeah, then they got new development. That's that would be nicer, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. It depends on where, yeah. what city you're talking about, too. Do you yeah, have any right. regrets on your move? Uh, not really. No, I mean, there's there's some things I miss, but. Uh, you know, obviously some friends and family and stuff like that. And other things that that I had, stupid stuff, it doesn't really matter. But, you know, I was a big gun guy, right? <laughs> and so I, had, okay. I was I was, in, I was in a shooting, I was in a reloading and uh, collecting guns. I had a lot of them. I still do, actually. My wife has possession of them right now. But I had, you know, dozens 
of guns. And uh, uh, yeah, here it's, uh, you know, it's not a right to have a gun. Uh, you can get them, but you've got to go through a process and uh, you've got to start with a shotgun. You get on the shotgun for five years before you can get a rifle. And like owning, okay. a, handgun, owning a handgun is like almost impossible. I mean, you could, you could, I think you're allowed to have them if you keep them at a club where you compete, like if you're competing, but you're not allowed to like keep them at home. You're not allowed to definitely not allowed to carry. I mean, getting a, like I have a concealed carry permit. Well, the Texas is constitutional carry now, but I also have a concealed per carry permit that allows me to carry in like 35 other States. But uh, okay. you're not going to get that in Russia. There's no way. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So, so that, I didn't realize that. that. So shotgun first, shotgun for five years, even before a 22. Oh. Yeah, you can't have yeah anything with a rifle barrel. Um, you have to have you have to have owned a shotgun for at least five years. See, I always use the twenty two for critter control, skunks, coons, things like that, getting in the chicken coop, and for uh, for butchering cows and pigs. Uh, twenty two does a great job dispatching, right? So that's been one thing that I'm like, hey, now what am I going to do over here? But uh, we'll, we'll figure something. Out. Now that being said, I mean, uh, well, there there might be some limits too. I think on what kind of a shotgun you could get initially, but but definitely like a single shot or a double barrel shotgun is no problem. You know, uh, once you're, I think you you have to be a resident at least though, and yeah, I think you have to at least right. have your temporary residency, and you've got to do you've got to pass a medical and psychological test, and you also have to uh, you have to do some uh, like uh, safety courses. I and don't then, think that's and, all bad. Up in Canada, we had a lot of more strict rules, obviously, than you guys did anyway. So I had to go through my gun right. course. I think it was a two-day course or something like that in order to pass. Um, right. Yeah, I know some of that makes sense, right? You don't want people that aren't quite mentally right to uh, run around with guns. I yeah. don't think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway, that's I, I kind of miss that, you know. <laughs> but but then again you know you don't you don't i don't really feel the need because I, I just feel so much safer here i don't really feel the need to walk around carrying a gun everywhere <laughs> like i did in yep. the states you know? I, yep. mean, I literally i literally when i was in texas I, ne I never went anywhere without it without my gun on me yeah just in case yeah i was always carrying yeah yeah but i Such never different I, never cultures, had, I never had to pull it out but i was always carrying yeah biggest piece of advice you could give to others that are considering moving I would say uh, come here first as a tourist and spend okay. some time here. Yeah, because uh, there's a lot – you're going to find a lot of things out about the country that – living here that you maybe don't catch right away if you're just a tourist even. you know. So you have to come here and actually spend some time. And I would – I would uh, – I would, uh, you know, get outside of the big cities too and explore around the smaller towns and – uh, the provincial cities and stuff and kind of get more of a, a real flavor of what it's like, you know, before you made the commitment to move here. Yeah. Cause there, there's some things here that, that mm, some people may not like, you know? Okay. So in, I mean, in one not, area not, over another not, or in general, well, let's just put it this way. Um, it's not all, it's not all, uh, uh, you know, lollipops and rainbows, <laughs> you know, right, 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 right. Uh, yeah. Uh, especially when it comes to uh, dealing with the government, you know, it's uh, it's uh, the amount of uh, paperwork and bureaucracy here is just insane, you know. So, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be a lot things that you take for granted. Like I, I, for example, I I just bought this I bought this new Gaz Sobel van four by four van, and I want to modify yep. it into a, into a motorhome. Well, you can't do anything. I mean, even you know, changing a, a putting on a different tire. Or, or switching out like from a, from a halogon to an LED headlight or uh, anything that requires like even like drilling a hole into it, you have to get you have to get approval, okay, and then you have to get it inspected by the state, and then you have to get that in your technical passport. So really? uh, putting a roof rack on, putting a putting a different kind of a bumper on or a winch, uh, anything any modification whatsoever, you have to get it approved by the GBD, the 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 guy they call it, the the traffic police and uh, it's a hassle it's a hassle I, I, so what i've what i've done is 
I've decided that I'm just going to, um, I'm going to try to do everything at once. And I found this company up in Moscow. They're going to charge me 170,000 rubles to do it. But uh, uh, what I, what I do is I, I document everything as I'm, as I'm going along, like putting the insulation in the interior paneling, all the stuff on the inside, the bed and everything, putting the roof rack on the solar panels, all the mods I'm going to do to this thing to make it like a, uh, uh, not like a motorhome, but kind of a, a backwoods kind of off grid type motorhome. And uh, 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 anyway, document all that stuff with pictures. And then when it's all done, they're going to put together all the proposals and everything, submit that to the road police, the road police will look at it. And then because it comes from them, you know, it comes from this company that's an engineering company that has some, some like horsepower, right? My, the odds of it all getting approved are much better. And then, uh, then, I, uh, then I just uh, I go there with the vehicle. They inspect it, and then they give me a new uh, a new registration certificate and the technical passport that comes with that that has all the modifications listed. And here's the thing: if you if you don't do this, if you make a modification and and they catch you on the road, they can actually force you to park the vehicle. And they say you've got ten days to correct this, uh, or you lose your registration. You can't drive it anymore. Wow. But they, yeah, yeah, that's that's like worst case scenario. But that that's just one example of, of 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 stuff that you know you don't you don't have to deal with in the states really. California maybe, but but most of the country you don't have to deal with that crap. And uh, but here, it's just a reality. Uh, even in Canada, we've got some pretty strict stuff. But I found that uh, tourism laws and regular laws are different. So if you have a, a travel trailer, you can get away with an enormous amount of stuff that you could not get away with if you had a job job trailer for work. Right. Yeah. Uh, they tend to just let all the travel trailers go by because it's tourism dollars. They don't want to stop that. And they'll pull yeah, over all yeah. the contractors and look at their trailers. Right. So right. Uh, right. interesting. We haven't run yeah. into anything like that yet. I do know it's quite a bit. Well, I, I imagine it is in Canada, too, but I know it's quite a process to get, you know, get the whole immigration thing, get everything figured out. I would assume right. it's like that in every country. I don't know. I've right. never tried moving anywhere else. but Right. It should be anyway. You guys have lots of people coming across the southern border there in the states that should be uh, having to fill in a lot more paperwork than they are, <laughs> right? Yeah, if yeah, if you come in, if you come in uh, illegally, it's actually a lot easier for you <laughs> in the states. To to, yeah, to try to come in legally as an immigrant, yeah, for sure. But yeah, that's, you that's ever consider uh, you ever consider going back? No, you're happy here. Yeah. Yeah, not 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 unless there's a total change in the government. Yeah, I you know I I basically my big beef. What really got me started on all this uh, was my beef with the foreign policy of the United States. And uh, okay, I I don't I don't think I don't. It doesn't really matter who the president is. You know, I think Trump is possibly going to win, but I don't think it's going to change anything. Um, I think uh, no. I think the United States. Uh, has been on a path uh, to uh, towards global domination for a long time, and uh, they're finally getting some pushback right from the rest of the world, and uh, and now they're starting to get desperate, and uh, you know, yeah, I, I think it's looking pretty ugly <laughs> right now, especially if, I, if it's they, the fall of an empire, right? So yeah, yeah, and they're and they're and it's they're like a wounded animal, and. They're actually mm -hmm. more and more yep. crazy as, as time goes on. And yeah, I, I don't see any way out of it. I don't see any any political solution to what's going on with the United States government. I think the only solution is is it has to be replaced. Yeah, because right. I, yep. I, I would say same in Canada. A lot of people are banking on the next election. Oh, that's going to fix a lot. And admittedly, short term, yes, if you're looking like this again, it'll fix a lot because it'll slow oh. it down. And so from day to day, it'll look like it's a lot better, but it's still going in the same direction. It's just instead of going 80 mile an hour, it's now going, you know, 10 mile an hour, or 20 mile an hour, uh, but it's still going in the wrong direction. No government's ever yeah. going back the other way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got to be real careful about what I say if you're putting this on YouTube. So I'm going to, there's some other things I'd like to say, but I'm not going to say them because if I do, no, uh, you get a strike. Yeah, don't, don't get, don't get me strike <laughs> or banned, but. 
Yeah, and, uh, I think because there's some things I said that if I said now would definitely get a strike. Yeah. Well, don't so. don't do that. But I think it's clear <laughs> though that Western countries as a whole are continuing to head in the in the wrong. And it doesn't matter who gets elected. Uh, right. they're, they're basically just puppets for what's happening behind the scenes. Right. right. So. But but remember this. Remember this. That you know, um, the United States. Um, the United States is a true democracy. And that, and that the results of the elections are always on the up and up, and you have to, and you have to trust them. So just have faith in that. Have faith in your government, and and everything will work out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll move on to the next one. I know you don't believe that. Either. <laughs> safety. We covered. Uh, you covered safety already. I think we probably don't need to talk about it again. But you feel really safe in this country. You already said you drove all over the place, and you feel really safe. Yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and talking about the cops, um, uh, this is it's another thing with the Absolutely. cops here. They don't they don't have to have a reason to stop you and check for your documents, you know. And uh, so when you when you're driving along, you'll have a DPS road police guys, and they just wave you over. And yep. uh, and uh, so when when you do that, they you have to produce your documents. And uh, but I've never I've, I've had that happen like three times. And uh, and they just look at my documents, and as long as your documents are in order, and you're you're not doing something else illegal, then you know it's no, no problem. Deal. But uh, I've only had it once. I handed him my Canadian driver's license. I don't know if he could read it or not. I have no idea. Yeah, and, well, uh, and the I, vehicle I advise, registration. And, hey, I advise you to get a to get a. Uh, um, I carry with me a certified notarized translation of my driver's license. I, I do have that. He didn't ask for it. I just handed him the Canadian one. I handed him the vehicle <laughs> registration. He's like, okay, it's good. Where you go? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of times they just don't want to deal with it. It's like they, they, they usually, when, Sorry, they, when they look at my license, you know, they don't even know what to do. It's like, they just start laughing. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, really, unless there's an obvious infraction in front of them, you know, I'm missing yeah. a tire or something or whatever. I mean, we weren't speeding. We weren't doing anything wrong. So they're just checking to make sure you have your paperwork and away you go. Yeah. Oh, by the, way, good. by the way, there's an app you can get if you don't already have it that will uh, you can put your vehicle information in this app and it'll tell you if you have any fines. Oh, yeah, I got it already. Yep. You got it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I've got a lot of fines, you know. Yeah, I got for, quite a uh, few the other day. And I thought it was cool because if you pay them within 20 days, they're half price. So, yeah. so it's pretty good. Deal. Yeah, it's like, yeah, you can you can't they got they've got they've got these cameras everywhere, right? Yeah. And uh, you know, you just don't sometimes they sneak up on you and it's like and you're you know, it's it'll go from like say sixty to like forty kilometers an hour and you know, you're not going you know, so maybe I'm going fifty. Well actually they I think I think they allow you. They got a little bit of leeway in there, but I know I've gotten yeah, I've gotten, they do, yeah. I've gotten hit by those speed cameras and I, I was driving a lot of Neva, you know, I wasn't driving like super fast ever, you know, but um, it just that some, sometimes it'll go to like a super slow speed and you maybe miss the, the warning sign or something like that. Right. But, right. See in Canada, we're maybe a little bit dumber. So they got more signs for us. They'll say, uh, you know, 80 ends and then 60 begins, you know, uh, or 60 ahead, so you know it's coming. Here, they don't have that. It's just boom, uh, 40. Oh, when did that happen? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So you got to be so a little bit more alert here. Yeah, so generally speaking, I mean, if every, like when you're driving in the countryside, when you see a little village coming up, just just slow down to 60 right away, you know, right or less. Yeah. Get under still. And, Even and, and, uh, and that, even on the end of town, I've seen it doesn't say again that 90 begins or nothing. It just shows uh, it's got a line through the, through the town name. So I'm assuming that 90 begins again after that sign. But Yeah, yeah. that's a pretty safe assumption. But <laughs> yeah, so. Tickets yeah. are cheap but enough at least. Is, don't, the, uh, is the fines are low. The fines are, are very low yep. compared, yeah, compared to like America. It's like, okay, 300 rubles or something. It's like, all right, you know. <laughs> yeah, the learning curve is not super expensive. Yeah. Eventually yeah. figure it out. Yeah. All right, last question. Uh, where do you think Russia will be in five, ten years? Spiritually, economically, whatever. Well, I, you know, barring a lot of it depends on what happens uh, with this war. You know, let's let's face it. That's that's the big unknown. We don't know. Um, I, I I'm kind of hoping it isn't going to happen, but I know France and Britain 
are threatening to send troops to Ukraine. And yeah. uh, that could be an escalation that pulls the United States in, the rest of NATO. Um, that could get out of control really quick and could lead to uh, a nuclear confrontation. You know, so, and then there's China. You know, the U.S. is also trying to pick a fight with China, right? And there's Iran. You know, this this basically the U.S. is all over the world starting fires, trying to start World War III. So, uh, yeah, we'll just see. We'll just see um, how far that goes. If it doesn't start, then I see. I see, yeah, I see the future being bright here, but it depends on whether or not we blow each other up first. Well, yeah, that probably wouldn't make a difference if you lived there or here, then either way, it would be not good in that scenario. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah. So the, the bright future might be the, you know, the nuclear blast. Who knows? You know, hopefully not. But it just, it just seems, it just seems that that's the direction they're heading right now. Hopefully, cooler yeah. heads will prevail. In, in that regrettable situation, I hope that never happens. But if it does, I still feel that we are on the right side here. Uh, Definitely right maybe a lot of the viewers won't, won't agree with me, but just from a scriptural standpoint, this is a country, uh, no, it might not be a Christian nation, uh, but it, I believe it's heading towards God in its principles, at least. And I think that will be blessed by God versus the, the West who is running from God, cursing God, um, you know, doesn't want anything to do with God. I, I think that is going to, play a factor in there in my opinion yeah well, well i definitely agree with you on the right side of history thing you know mm -hmm. so and you've got to you've got at some point you've got at some point pick sides really and and you've yep. got to identify you know the good guys from the bad guys i mean that's that's what i've done that's what you've done it seems like and uh i wish more people in the west would do that and do what they need to do to stop their crazy governments from destroying us all, you know, unless they get up off their ass. Um, yeah. That's inevitable. In, in that, in that, this is not really part of the topics today, but anyway, my wife's going to get me in trouble when she's editing this for all the politics that's involved. But in that, uh, in that situation, if like, hopefully the war doesn't break out like that, but there is still a factor as well as the elections in the States. And, uh, Either way, that could turn into a nasty civil war or, or something problematic in the States that keeps them from doing anything hostile over here. There's a factor to be played in there as well. Yeah, yeah, potentially. I, I don't know. I, I, I know a lot of guys in the States, and I hear from, oh, yeah, we're on the verge of civil war, blah, blah, blah. And, and it's like, yeah, I'll believe it when I see it, you know. But, yeah, sorry about the political thing, but I kind of warned you about that. <laughs> That's kind of how it was uh, going to go with yeah. I get very political as well. I try to keep it off of YouTube. <laughs> we started this channel for that reason. If I do get a strike, at least I lose this one and not the main family channel. Um, because there is a lot of stuff that needs to be talked about. And right. if we're always scared to be censored and we never talk about it, that's how we got in this mess. So I do think it's important to bring out some subjects. Uh, we try to keep it, you know, keep it tame, keep it cool. But hey, any last words to the to the viewers? Or uh, did you ever, I told you you should start a channel on this uh, van build. Did you end up doing that or no? Yeah, well, that's uh, at God's Sable 4x4. That's good. I don't have any content there yet. but That's uh, going to be a YouTube channel, though, for, for the channel? That's not the name of the I'm channel, sure. but that's like, my, that's like my handle. Okay. Okay, but, so people uh, can find you there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's it's going to be a while before I start producing any content. But, yeah, it'll probably be – like right now I got the van uh, over to shop getting this uh, – getting the radio and camera system put in. I don't know if I told you about it. I'm getting a – Yeah, a yeah back up in the front. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting that installed. This should be done today. And uh, so that, that might be my first video uh, talking about that. You know, hopefully okay. it all works out good. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try it again and just uh, – and just not get into politics and other stuff that'll end up getting me strikes. You know? Try not to talk. It helps to have a wife that censors you when she's editing. So, <laughs> Fine. so. <laughs> yes, that's one way to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Well, appreciate the chat. It's been nice talking with you. Uh, we'll you uh, too, we'll do it again sometime. Maybe get in a little bit more politics sometime too. But maybe we should do that <laughs> off camera. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. So. Good. Yeah. Okay, man.
Well, have All a right. good one. Thank you very much. Yep. Take care. All right. We'll see you. Bye-bye.